today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a Hogwarts house tie. So to do this craft, you'll need just an ordinary solid colored tie and ribbon. And I'm using the book colors, blue and bronze. I think this is actually technically copper, but it's close enough. Not like blue and white, blue and silver, like in the movies. So what I'm going to be doing is taking ribbon and sewing it onto the tie like this to recreate a pattern similar to the ones in the movies. I'm going to do both thick stripes and thin ones. This, I believe, is 3 eighths of an inch, and this thin ribbon is 1 quarter inch. But because I don't want to accidentally get them mixed up, I'm going to alternate. I'm going to first do all of the thick ribbon and then all of the thin ribbon. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a piece to the right length, and I want it to fold over like this so that I don't have loose ribbon sticking off of the end. And this first one's going to be really easy to position because I don't have to do it in reference to anything else other than the angle of the tie. So I'm going to pin it in place. Alright, so I have that pinned in place now, kind of where I want it. And I'm going to take some brown thread. I don't have a bronze thread, unfortunately, but this will do, I think. When I told my mother about this, she was like, well, why don't you just use glue? But I think that glue would not work very well because I think it would bleed through the ribbon, leaving stains on it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna take the tie and I'm going to put the needle in so that it'll go through both the ribbon that's folded over on bottom and on top. If you wanted to use a sewing machine for this, it might be possible. I'm not sure if the tie is too thick to go through that. I don't really use sewing machines, so I'm not sure. As such, this will probably be a little bit uneven, but I'm gonna try and keep it as steady as I can. finished with the first two stripes on the tie. Obviously I have a long ways to go, but it's a nice start. And I am just about sick of sewing, so I think I'm going to call it a night and maybe come back to it later or tomorrow. I've been working on this very slowly, just a ribbon or two at a time. It's been taking me between half an hour and an hour to do two ribbons together, so uh, it's a slow process. but. It's kind of nice to be able to work on it just, you know, half an hour to an hour at a time in the evenings and whatnot. All right, I think that is enough for today. stripes. You'll probably notice that I have a little bit of tie left, but what I did is I put it on and I put a safety pin where I needed to end it. That way I would know and I wouldn't just have to go all the way back because part of it will be tucked under. So the next thing that I need to do is I have this thinner ribbon that is one fourth of an inch and I'm going to put it like this as a set of thinner stripes in between. So with the thick stripes, the diagonal stitches kind of went over the ends of the ribbon and held them in place, but I think that with these thin ones, that's not going to work the same way. So I think I'm going to need to start with the uh, back of the ribbon and just kind of go under the fabric a little bit without going all the way through to the other side in order to anchor it in place.
basically what it's going to look like when it's done. Now I just have to uh, do all of the others. All right, I'm now done sewing on the ribbons, but what I need to do is to look at the back because there are a lot of long pieces of ribbon that are just kind of loose here. And as you can see, they're already starting to fray. So what I need to do now is cut them shorter and I'm gonna use some tacky glue to kind of seal off the edges to keep them from unraveling too much. Some parts of it still need to dry, so I'm just going to leave it here to dry for a bit. And there you have it, a Ravenclaw tie.